This week on Scam School, we teach you to do a real life Vulcan mind meld with your deck of cards, just like in that movie Star Wars. Trolling! Justin Matthew, toast me. There we go. All right, back again at the Moon Tower Saloon. As you know, we don't want a truck with uh, any kind of trick decks or whatever. Everything we do on Scam School, I want it to be something that you can you could do anytime, anywhere, right? So you take the cards, I'm gonna give them a little mix up. But I'm gonna have the cards whisper to me. They told me the truth about both of you. <laughs> that thing you did that time, they know, and now I know that they know, and you know that they know that I knew that they told me. <laughs> There's no proof. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna pass the cards past you. Each of you mentally think of one. Everything sound good? Give it a few cuts, just so we mix things up. You're thinking of a card, you're thinking of a card. What was your card? Ace of clubs. If I recall correctly, the ace of clubs was 19th from the top. What was your card? Two of clubs. The two of clubs, I wanna say, was 15th from the top. All right. So if I did my job correctly, we could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, what was it? 15. 15 would be your card. 16, 17, 18, was 19? 19. Was your card. Your, your card that you saw and mentally selected on your own was which one? Two of clubs. And yours was? Ace of clubs. Check it out. Let's see if I did it. Let's see if I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Best day ever. Do you guys like that? That was nice. Do you it's want good. to learn how to do that? Yeah, how to, I all need you to have know. to do is toast. Please. Let's get it. Toast, toast, toast. Talk me through it. What's it like from your perspective? Did you think I was checking out your eyes? I, know, I thought maybe like the card I saw wasn't moving as much as some of the other cards. Maybe that was it. So you thought I was influencing you. Like, like I don't know, think of any card that <laughs> feels good, right? Maybe. I, was, I was thinking there might be a force. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I went, as I went with the card I first thought of rather than trying to mix it up and be a jerk. Okay, got it, got uh, it. Just in case it was a oh, force. Oh, so you were, you were being a soft uh, mark, yeah. I guess like, you Like say. Ace of Clubs was the one I was thinking, and I was thinking of switching it to three in clubs as a nod to Penn and Teller. Yeah, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Here's the best part. This really was a free choice. When I was passing the cards in front of you, you honestly could have picked any single one you wanted. The only thing I cared about is that all of these cards stayed in the same order. This is set up in what's called a Cy Steven stack. It's like hundreds of years old. We've talked about it on Scan School before, but there's a particular way you set up the cards and we'll explain it in a moment. But the things you need to know is once you set up this stack, number one, it really does look totally random to the tune of, you don't detect any pattern as I go through these, right? Not really. Yeah, right? The second thing is that you can cut the cards as often as you want. A lot of people think that the more you cut the deck, the more mixed up it is. That's not the case. Think of the cards as a circle. And when you cut them, all you're doing is choosing a new point at which the circle is broken, right? So you can cut the cards over and over and over again, which means after pre-setting up this deck, you can do what looks like an overhand shuffle. A real overhand shuffle looks something like this, where you take the cards and, you, and you're just like, very sloppily throwing them all over the place, right? But you can mimic these actions and subconsciously convey the idea that they're shuffled simply by doing a single cut over and over again. You hold it, you grab half, put it on top, you're talking, you grab half, put it on top. You do want to convey that the cards are in flux, so I used a couple of false shuffles. I found a group of cards that happen to have higher values near the bottom. I like there being a king, a 10, and a seven, and you'll understand why in a moment. I like that being at the bottom. I'm just gonna do false shuffles from now on. This is my favorite false shuffle ever. You just take a block, take a block, you take a block, look people in the eye and you go block, block, block. And if you think about it, all I did was I went top, middle, bottom, top, in the middle, on the bottom. <laughs> but it felt like that was some real stuff, yeah. right? Yep. You, you could also do stuff like, like instead of pulling cards off the top and setting it down, you could pull it from underneath and set it down and then set it right back on top. I still have my favorite cards, my high value cards there at the bottom. So real quick, here's the size Stevin stack. It goes clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, or they say chased order, C-H-S-D. Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, over and over and over again. So if you look, it's always clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. What do you notice about the values of these? I bet you guys can figure this out. Yeah, There's always three. three. 
It's always three, yeah. right? So you, nice. you, you increase by three and you just keep going clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Now this creates some weird artifacts. For example, if the king of hearts is on uh, the bottom, then that means that the king of diamonds will be 26 in. And sure enough, there wow. he is at 26 in. Name any card in the deck right now and I'll tell you the formula I'm using. Take the ace of spades. Ace of spades. All I need to see are what the bottom cards are and I take this card minus whatever you said. So if you subtract ace or one from yeah. four, we get three. Three. Multiply that number times four. 12. 12. And I'm gonna subtract the one, two, three cards of the offset. Right. Which gives us Nine. Nine. So I now know that I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what was the card? Ace of spades. Nine, and there it <laughs> is, right? Part of the trick is that you want to make sure that the deck is constantly in motion. Like even though I'm just doing a single cut, it just feels like things are changing, and then you mix it up. And then if you want to get really fancy, there's this old school Erdnays things that uh, we teach this stuff over at Scam Stuff, the more advanced stuff, but like that left everything in the same order. So at this point, the hardest thing to do is find a natural way to make sure you can see the bottom four cards. So the way I did it is I could have you pick a card or I could tell you think of a card, but none of those would give me a reason right. to be look. holding the deck like this. So instead I say, I'm gonna pass the cards in your heart of hearts where nobody could ever know I want you to pick one. Right, and then as I bundle everything up, I just make sure I bundle it so I'm still able to see the bottom four cards. Right. And plus also, it reduces the chances of, if I say, think of a card, and the first four come out like this, you're, you're not gonna pick one of those four, you're gonna pick one of the other ones, right? Exactly. And then you're not gonna mind that you can see those first four. The easiest, most perfect version of this is, let's say, a king of clubs is on bottom, and you picked any club. The seven of clubs. Seven of clubs, so the king is 13, 13 minus seven is? Six. Six times four is? 24. 24. So if we just go straight through and go 1, 2, 3, 21, 22, 23, the 24th card should be... Seven of clubs. Seven of clubs, right? Seven goes. So let's do a more challenging one. Let's say you're doing a diamond, but the diamond showing is two. So uh, pick a difficult value to subtract from two. So let's say we're gonna do an eight. There we go. So what eight we're gonna do is kind of count backwards. Right. So what I would do is I would immediately add 13 to this two. Okay. So. 15 minus eight is? Seven. Seven, that's right. <laughs> Times four is? 28. 28 Got with it. an offset of? Three. Which gives us? 25. 25, all right, Perfect. what was the card again? The eight of diamonds. Four, 25, eight of diamonds, be the eight of diamonds. Yes! <laughs> we have Let's magical go. powers. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Just realize everything is running in a circle. Once right, you right, set right. up a size Stevens deck, size the values, the suits, everything. Got it. And it doesn't matter where you break the circle, it only matters if you alter the order of the circle. So with that in mind, you, you, you think you can pull this off? With some hand holding, all right, I can all right, pull this all right, off. Let's, all right, let's go for it. This is a, a special deck that I just met. I'm getting to know it. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna end up just showing you some of the cards. Okay. Dude, he really does look like he's mixing do, uh, it up, right? I know, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't want, want you to I'm like, give me any time. <laughs> but just kind of as I go through them, just find one you think you like and memorize it. Did you get one? Yeah, do you want me to go through again? You got one? I got one. Here, what was it? What was it? Nine of diamonds. Okay, that's fine. He won't hear. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, you already got your glimpse, you sneaky snake. I did. I don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember all four, but I got the glimpse. I don't try to square everything up. Okay. I kind of I kind of like act like I'm half squaring up and then I get distracted. Okay. Miraculously, I seem to get distracted a lot where I'm almost completely in action. So you're holding the cards like this. He right. says what? Nine of diamonds. Nine of diamonds. What is nine tip from one? Remembering that what you do is you add 13 okay. to the ace. So 14 minus nine, you're going to call it five. Five, right. And then uh, times. multiply times four is 20. That's right. And then there's no offset. That's right. So it's just 20 from So there. let me hear your prediction, bro. So you said the, the nine of diamonds? Nine of diamonds. If I remember correctly, actually I don't have to remember. No pressure. They're going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> The nine of diamonds. I love this cocky moment. It's when everybody 20th knows from the won. top. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, 18, 19, 20. No way. No way. What is it? Nine, nine, of, nine of diamonds. Oh! oh, dude, that was freaking fantastic. Toast this man.
A lot of times on Scam School, we try to come up with a brand new presentation for a really old idea. But in this case, we presented this trick exactly as it was written up over a hundred years ago. You can find the original copy of Cy Stebbins and all of his tricks somewhere out there on the web. People ask me all the time where they can learn more stuff beyond Scam School. It's all locked up in books. Go to the library to section 793.8 and lose yourself in some of the best material in the business. And meanwhile, hit me up on Twitter at twitter.com slash wood. There is no C and Schwood. And if you haven't already gotten on the hype train for themodernrogue.com, you've got to join us. Jason Murphy and I are on a quest to become ultimate badasses. Here we are making homemade body armor like a low budget Iron Man. Hey, buddy, I don't know who you think you are, but you can't go running around like that. Oh, what? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Okay, now I'm more scared than you. King of Hearts. Let's get it. What? what? Uh, Queen of Hearts. Yeah. Wait. Three, four, three, five. What was the card? Jack of something. That's not it. <laughs> I did bad math and I'm glad I got busted. Oh, you already got your glimpse, you sneaky snake. <laughs>